Within seven seconds, a person will make 11 judgments about you. And that's what I believe. So first impressions are everything. This is Bob Rourke with Business Leaders Podcast. And today we're incredibly fortunate. We have Shelly Owl. He's from Shelly Owl Photography. And we're going to be talking about imagery and visual work with him and why it's important. Shelly, tell me a little bit about your business and who you serve. Uh, Bob, thank you, first of all, for having me here. Uh, I really appreciate it and the opportunity to, to chat with you on this. Uh, really, my business is focused on two areas. It's uh, headshots and really high-end quality headshots. Uh, and then the second part is visual branding. And it's really communicating the story of uh, a business and what they're doing and how do you artistically and, and creatively, uh, creatively, sorry, uh, help them communicate that to the world and the public. Well, you know, you, you and I met, you were doing, uh, I was at a corporate training event mm -hmm. and you were doing all the headshots yes. for all of the participants. Yes. And, you know, for most of us rookies, you know, we'll do a selfie and go, there's my photo and I stick it on LinkedIn. Right? Yes. And you look at it and you go, it looks like a bad mugshot <laughs> from the police department. So for you, yes, let's talk about yeah. the importance of that headshot in representing who you are. Yes. Uh, there's a lot that goes into it, believe it or not. Uh, the general photographer will just bring in your studio and just shoot you. Uh, what I like to do, and, and keep in mind, when I photographed you and many others, I only had 10 minutes. And so I do my best to try and communicate with you and to hear about what you're doing because all of that helps me pose you. The way I, I get your eyes to look, the way you sit up or down, lean towards the camera, turn your face. So I'm studying you, I'm studying my subject, their face, but I'm also trying to bring out who they are as a person. Um, and, and again, that's what I would, I would pose them differently. You know, uh, uh, I had Frank Shamrock come in and he was a boxer and, and just trying to, you know, he had awesome cheekbones and trying to get him, you know, uh, as he speaks, you know, uh, with his hands going, you know, and so I definitely really study them and, and try to help them come out. And I feel like, uh, that helps, that separates me from the others as well. Um, along with uh, some of the training, uh, I've been very fortunate to train under uh, some people who really do headshots well. Uh, Peter Hurley in New York, uh, you know, charges two thousand dollars for a headshot, and so uh, I'm, I'm part of his crew, and I'm always crafting, you know, uh, that what's best for that person. You know, the, the, I'm, I'm fortunate that I, I've already had my headshot done by Shelley. You know, and, and part of the reason I had him on the podcast is because I thought it was important to talk about the visual conveyance, mm -hmm. if for lack of a better term. And, and I can remember popped out of a meeting. We went down this long hall and we go to this studio, right, that you set up on site. And it's not just as simple as your subject sitting down mm -hmm. and take a photo and get up and leave. Mm -hmm. There's a whole process that you go through when you do the photo. Let's mm -hmm. talk a little bit about how you get your subject ready and comfortable. Yeah, well, there's a few things there. Uh, one is even uh, the lighting setup I chose. Uh, I have uh, LED lights that's constantly on. And so that right there, there's a sparkle in your eyes. Um, but it's not that triggering flash that goes off. Uh, and I can do that, and I have done it that way. Um, but that that con continuous lighting uh, just allows a person to relax, first of all. Um, and then I always kneel and, and when I'm communicating. I, I, I have them sit on the chair first. and But just really, it's almost just talking and finding out about who they are. Because sometimes people uh, are... are very serious, you know, uh, and, and not always, and, and, and that's who they are. And I try to bring that out. Um, but sometimes very funny. And so we get some candids of them, you know, uh, they don't even know I'm taking pictures of them, but I, I'm grabbing some shots. And so, um, again, it, it's really connecting and, and, and it's telling their story. And a lot of people, you know, they love to talk about themselves. And so how do you bring that out in them? Uh, I had a, a customer, uh, I did his headshot at the, at the workshop, uh, and he hated taking photos. 
He really did. In fact, uh, afterwards, he said, Shelly, thank you so much. Uh, that was amazing. I, I hate taking photos. And I, I didn't know that. Um, he said, let's work together again. So, uh, you know, afterwards we connected. Uh, he shared about his business. Um, he flew me out to Ohio. Went all the way there, you know, had this uh, for a week long, shot his whole staff, him speaking, uh, all these different kinds of things, team shots. And he had an event, and he told all of his advisors at this event uh, before the meeting. He said, you see that man back there? He's a photographer from Colorado. I brought him here because when I did the workshop, he took the time to get to, kn to, get to know me. And I have never, I hate taking photos, and I've never had a photo like that before. And, and so I brought him here because as financial planners, we need to take the time to get to know our customers and invest in our people, and and that's what we do. And that was so honoring for me uh, that he flew me all the way there to do all this. And since then, I've flown to Florida and all these kinds of things, helping uh, uh, company CEOs tell their story of, of what they are. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I have some images. In fact, you know what? I need to show you this image here, um, and we'll have it on the screen, I guess. This is uh, Rebecca Walzer in Florida. She's another financial advisor. Um, and for the folks that have video, <laughs> I'm holding it up right here where you can see the image. You know, the thing that's interesting, you know, is in, in my personal experience, uh -huh. uh, I had an old photo and updated my photo with yours. Uh huh and had a raft of compliments <laughs> and more importantly with the compliments were not like geez you really look better than you do um but they basically said that really captures who you are hmm. you know which i thought was important and so and, and yes. again which which comes back to why we're here yes you know in 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 the business environment uh so much of what we see nowadays mm -hmm. are social media driven, whether it's LinkedIn or whether it's Twitter mm -hmm. or whether it's your website and visual representation on your website. Yes. And so maybe we should, you know, you, you mentioned in the lead in here mm -hmm. in the first seven seconds mm -hmm. and you were talking about 11 judgments. Yes. What's your thoughts behind that? You, you have just a fraction, you know, that seven seconds to really, you know, it's, it's to capture them, you know, in, in speaking, you, you have a few seconds to hook your audience. Mm -hmm. When people see your profile, and if you have a sloppy profile, they're going to like, oh, this person's not serious about themselves. They're not serious about their business. And so really it's, it's communicating by seeing, oh, wow, this person is professional. Okay, look, look at them. They're, they're serious. They're going after it, you know. Um, and so uh, I really, I feel like it's a big problem, right? How do we get people to portray who they are, help businesses succeed, take the next step? Let's, communi let's create imagery that really impacts, that really wows, that really like, oh, this is what I'm about. Um, and that's one of the biggest mistakes people have on their websites is just is they just throw images on there and then, you know, it, it's like, oh, it's too much, too much words, you know, and it's overwhelming. The customer really doesn't know how to navigate and they just go to somewhere else versus, oh, it's very clear what they do, what their message is, who they're helping, what problem they're trying to solve. You know, we'd love to think that it's rational. <laughs> you know, and uh -huh. on, the, on the visual interpretation of what we put out there, mm -hmm. you know, and I think it's exactly correct that if you're serious about your business and you're serious about your branding, mm -hmm. that clearly quality imagery work matters. Mm -hmm. You know, and too, if you do it, you know, you own the rights to your photos. Yes, Instead that's of true. snagging them somewhere off the internet and hoping for the best. Absolutely. Yes. So, so tell us a little bit about how you got involved with the photography world as a business. Oh, that's a really good story. Okay. Uh, so I spent 17 years overseas as a, as a missionary. Uh, I did a lot of finances administration. I was a business major out of college. Really, I wanted to give three years back of my life. Three years turned into 22. 
<laughs> of that 17 years was overseas. Uh, I was helping people do all kinds of administrative things. I was finances, operations, rent security. Uh, and we're talking of 12 countries, you know, all together at the head office. And then at one point, uh, we had a group of short-termers come over and they had a camera and they started taking pictures of my kids. And I'm like, wow, that is amazing. And they're like, no, it's in the camera. I'm like, no. As I began to hang out, they let me borrow the camera. And it just, it's like, wow, this is really fun. What well, at that point, I decided, like, you know, I think my wife saw a difference in me when I had a camera in my hands. And I started doing media uh, videos and things like that. And so I said, you know, I want to do something for me in some ways that I, I've really been helping others a ton. And I want to do something I'm passionate about. Um, and not that I wasn't passionate about the mission. I was, but I just wanted a, something that was alive in me. So uh, I decided to pursue it, uh, raise a ton of money, uh, started. I told my boss, my Asian boss, no, which is really, you don't do that. He asked me to take the head operations job. And I said, no, I want to start a media company, a uh, portion of our organization. And he gave me his blessings. Uh, and then we started to create products. And I created a tool called HeartMare. It's using 50 images to really allow people to connect with each other. No words, right? We're in an a Asian country, a uh, closed country. Uh, created this tool and I brought in nationals to come in and we all created it together. They named it. Uh, we had questions developed. It, it became a product. It was so impactful. And, and one of the most impactful stories for me was I got a letter saying I was about to commit suicide. I, I went to uh, a church. This is in this closed country. Went to a church. This person laid out these cards and we began to talk. Um, and basically saw an image uh, of hope and, and that my life doesn't have to be this way. And so here it is this this tool that I had created allowed people to interact and it, it helped save a life. Um, we would take it to universities uh, in business meetings and they would introduce this cards and within five minutes people are tearing because they're sharing about this image. Oh, that looks like my grandmother who passed away, you know, uh, things like that. And it just allowed people to connect. And that was the first time I realized, wow, imagery can really be used to go to a place where words cannot or human interaction cannot. And so I began this journey of, wow, I, I really love the story behind images. Uh, and as I began, as I got my master's degree in New York, I began to see, wow, there's a lot of powerful imagery and how can that be used to help people communicate themselves? How can that be used for other people, businesses to communicate their message? Uh, so yeah. Sorry, I don't know if that that's a long no, answer, but no, no, I, I think about it, and, and you've been recognized for some of the stuff that you're doing because mm -hmm. you placed oh, what was it in an Adobe competition? Yes, as a as I got my master's, and I, this is like my second career, right? Uh, you know, mid thirties, forties, uh, getting my master's degree uh, in New York, and uh, got nominated for the student uh, Adobe Design Award Achievement Awards in the photography category, um, and uh, basically my master's thesis was on the documentary of what was happening in China, uh, broken homes. Uh, those homes were being torn down. Uh, and so my teacher, uh, uh, who she was inducted to the Photoshop Hall of Fame in 2005, Katrina Eisman. And so she, she's like, Shelly, you have to do this project. It's so powerful. And so I had documented for three years, uh, actually yeah, two and a half years, just all what was going on. Uh, and then I had this wall, this image, where it was a full-blown uh, image on the wall, a character, Chinese character on the wall, and then uh, it was a normal life with a you know bicycle. There's humanity in it. And the next uh, a year later, half of it was torn down, and you could see for miles broken, you know, rubble. <laughs> and that was really cool because it's like I didn't know I had that image, and when I put them together. Uh, so that became the front and the back of my book, mm -hmm. the cover and the end of, the, of, of that book. Uh, and I turned that into a thesis. Um, and then I was touring that. When I got to Colorado, moved back to the States, I began touring that to conferences and churches and high schools, uh, that whole thesis. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was really powerful. 
And so you've you've now moved from that. Yes. We were talking about you don't just do headshots. You're mm-hmm. starting to work with automobile dealerships as well. Yes. And also small businesses. Yes. Let's talk about your efforts in those areas. Yeah, so that's a other part of my business is visual branding. You know, it's how do we communicate a message through storytelling. You know, I consider myself a visual storyteller. And so, uh, I, I, you know, help companies not only do headshots, but look at their websites, making sure the message that they're communicating flows. Uh, so I've been working with Courtesy Acura here in town, uh, doing a lot of promos for them uh, in visually. They put you know things on their websites, but just bringing the humanity side of the cars. Um, and I have some images here that I can show you, um, but now I'm starting to create really fun, creative things where that, that is called a composite, where we add different elements you know, yeah, it's still the car, but hey, his son uh, was flying over the car. His daughter's holding on. You know, they're all in the car, you know, uh, or creating a snow scene when it wasn't really snowing, you know, and just adding that and just kind of telling the story of, of you know, of, of that. Um, and I'm going over to uh, L.A. in a couple months uh, with Frank Shamrock, the boxer I was telling you about. He's having me come out there. Uh, his daughter is uh, 10 years old. She has two agents. She's, you know, so I'm going to do actor headshots, and she's very athletic. She has, you know, a six pack or eight pack. He says. Oh. So I'm going to do a whole Nike kind of uh, sports scene. Uh, again, we're going after artistic creativity. That really, when someone sees it, they go, "Wow," mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, and then they, you know, they tell me more. Mm-hmm. And, and so that's what I, I'm, I'm kind of branching out doing. So both headshots. In, in some ways, they actually tie together because I'm really telling the story. Uh, you know, even in a headshot, I'm telling the story of a person. Um, but I feel like this whole visual brand and creative side that's that's exciting for me. You know, we're going after one image. You know, and it's a big production. Um, but then really, you know, uh, telling that story. So yeah, that's a lot of. A lot you know, of, I think is when, when you're out there talking to the business owners. Mm-hmm. And they're considering whether they take and engage. What are you hearing back from some of the business owners that you've worked with about the results that come from the work that you're doing for them? Oh, they love it. Uh, in fact, that gal in Florida, she's on CNBC. She's you know uh, on the news and all that kind of stuff. But they just love the uh, the hits that they're getting. You know the images that are coming out of that. Um, I'm still working with an Ohio client because a lot of times, um, you know, they lose people as well in their financial services. So he's having me remove things, you know, um, but they love that because, you know, they want that updated immediately. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but this, you know, uh, courtesy Acura, he puts it on Instagram and, you know, hey, what do you guys think? And a lot of people interact. Even that in itself by him, what do you think? You know, people are interacting and, and you know, uh, coming across that. So, yeah, I've been hearing a lot of feedback. Uh, it, it's it's th- This whole new visual branding side is, you know, probably within the last year. Um, I, I've been really studying um, and I'm learning from a, a person called Josh Rosie uh, where he creates amazing imagery, even for Adobe and all these kinds of things. And so... Um, yeah, just really learning under the best. And, and I feel like that's a, a business model I'm learning is when I find something, I, I want to find the best person in that industry and go and, and learn from them. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where I feel like that's helped me in business. N- don't just try and do the free YouTube thing. You can, but learn from the best. If you're going to learn and study under the best, you know, even my photo retouching, it, it's like I found a person who retouches really well. And, and I buy into their program and I learn from them so my imagery stands out. You know, the way I retouch the skin, I don't want them to look plastic. Mm-hmm. I, I want the wrinkles to show, but I want their, their face to glow. And that's part of my headshots. Why it's so well received is because the way I edit too. It's not just how I shoot you and get your expressions, but it's how I bring out your color, you know, uh, making sure everything is, you know, uh, uh, who you are, but not fake <laughs> not, not fine line yes there's fine a fine line, line you know um and so uh yeah that that's well we're going to shift gears a little sure bit. sure this is the the part of the episode where well I, I basically asked you a series of questions and this one you know most recent book or an influential book 
that's altered your perception on what you do or how you run your business? Yes, uh, Seth Godin. Uh, wow, uh, he has been impacting me a lot. In fact, I've made a mind shift the past three months. I'm um, actually spending about uh, 25% of my time in development of my business. Um, you get to a certain point, you feel like you're there, but then you forget about the learning piece. Realizing that there's always room for development, always room for learning. And so this whole part of what Seth is uh, and the marketing side of what he's uh, sharing and producing is his newest book called This Is Marketing. And right after uh, it was released, I, I listened, you know, I like to listen to you know, audible books uh, and, and we got the, the printed copy too. But really, for him, it's, it's cultivating your clan, your people, and really going all out to um, treat them well, to you know, uh, really develop them, and not worry about satisfying everybody. That's one of the biggest mistakes, I think, as business owners. We try to make everybody happy, and in the end, it's mediocre work. Mm -hmm. But you go after a certain style, and, and like my headshots, I do the Peter Hurley style. Mm -hmm. That is my style. I'll cut off the head a little bit. People are like, why are you cutting off my head? Well, that's, that's if I want to be closer to you as a viewer. I don't, I don't need to see the, everything else. I want to see who you are. Look into your eyes, you know? You're, you're, you know? And so I don't know how I got off on that tangent, but, <laughs> but really you know, developing, I, you know. I think you get into a niche, right? Mm -hmm. and, and if you're passionate about your niche and what you believe, yes. right, then you communicate it. And, and right now, verbally, is the medium that we're working on in the podcast. Okay. Right? The video does somewhat of a job, mm -hmm. but it doesn't do the job like when you get up close mm -hmm. with the camera for a headshot. Yes. It's a different thing. Mm -hmm. Different thing. Yes. You know, so before I get too far down the road, so if folks want to reach out to you and find you on social media, how do yes. they find you? Uh, we'll have a list, I guess, uh, on the screen, but Shelly Al, it says S-H-E-L-L-Y-A-U.com. Okay. Uh, that's the my website. Uh and then I have a lot of, you know, I'm on everything, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, you know, directly to my headshots is headshotsbyshelly.com. Uh, and, but then it'll have everything on there. You okay, know, so that's how they find you. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Mm -hmm. All right, you know, looking back over your business, you know, maybe a failure or perhaps at the time it seemed like a failure that's helped you with your business now. Ah. <sighs> There's a lot of mistakes that uh, that have come across that I've learned from, and one is you get so as as a new business owner you get so focused on trying to survive, trying to pay the bills, you forget about giving, you forget about helping others along the way. You're at the need to be helped, but at the same time. Uh, giving back and, and, and pouring yourself out. And so uh, in, in the earlier portion of, of, of starting my business, I was so focused on myself and I didn't think of others. And then realizing, you know what, uh, I need to change that. Um, and, uh, you know, even the way I talked to my assistants, I didn't want to give them all my information. <laughs> but then it's like, you know what, She's a college student. She's learning. Um, I, I, and I pour myself out to her. And I'm like, you know, this is how we, you know, you do it. You know, and and, um, and thinking of her, you know, uh, I'm a little bit more, you know, able to connect to people. And, and she's not. She's an introvert. I'm an introvert too. But the way I connect is, is really something. And so uh, I have her watch that and, and, and try her best. You know, so... I guess that's my thing is is not being afraid to share information, your wealth, and give back to others. Um, I think that's so important. You know, if you could put an ad on page one of the local business paper sharing your belief or message about what you're doing, what would it say and why? Hmm. You know, it kind of goes back to that 7-Eleven principle. You know, really, you have a short... Uh, time to really make a first impact and and so you know imagery for me it's, it's that creative imagery that really impacts you know it's that artistic uh, 
creativity um, that wows people. And, and, and that's what I'm about. It's not just your average photography photographer. It's, it's, it's that relationship connecting with them and, and bringing that out. And so, um, yeah, imagery that, that impacts, I, I think that's my, you know, quote, um, or, or that, that 7-Eleven principle, you know, those kind of, those messages, those are my, my, the things that I really, yeah, I feel like. It's, it's, it all drives into what you were talking about is a visual storytelling, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's a short story or it's a longer story. Yes, yes, actually, visual storytelling is also my tag, one of my tags, you know, uh, in fact, Adobe, in fact, I got that from Adobe from when I won that award or when I went through that process, uh, they had branded me as a visual storyteller and I've been using that in my tag ever since just, you know, uh, through photography, not even through video. It's just, you know, telling the story in, in, a, in a scene, mm -hmm. right? And that's, that's what I'm about. I love that. You know, what was it uh, Maya Angelou says, you know, they won't remember what you said. They'll remember how they how you, they made you feel. Hmm. You yes. Know, and you think about the visual mm -hmm. impact and how it makes people feel. Yes. Yes. Yeah, really connecting with them. Yeah. And and I think it shows through the images I create. You know, it's, it's that lens of, of getting them to that place. Yeah. And, and, yeah, connecting with them. Best allocation of time or initiative that's helped you the most? Wow. Uh, development. With my personality, I really uh, pour myself in all the busyness of stuff. And when I can just sit down for 10 minutes, calm myself down, go for a walk, that is the best thing I can do. Um, I have a business coach. And, you know, that always, it's always the hardest thing to do because we, we get so caught up in the, the busyness of life and trying to make things work that we forget to pause, uh, rest, and figure out if you're headed in the right direction. And I think that is, I need to do that more. I try to do it as much as I can. But that, that is one thing that I always strive to, to do. And, and I often fail. <laughs> especially with two kids you know wife and a dog it's just crazy uh but having to stop and pause um and just reflect and 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 just get some me time you know mm -hmm. that is probably uh the best use of time <laughs> perfect unusual habit or what others might consider unusual you know that's uh helped you or your company most oh You know, uh, when I'm going through my imagery, oftentimes I, I have to let it rest for a day. Mm -hmm. Then I'll go back and re-edit, uh, giving it time. And, and a lot of times uh, it, it makes it better uh, because then you, you go back and you're not rushed and, and, and you have a different perspective on it. So that's one of the small okay. things I do just from my imagery standpoint. Um, well, and, and another thing, you know, talking about the business, I have a business coach and that is actually a, another one of my great things is just being able to talk things through, you know, not, you don't feel alone. Um, and again, hiring the best, you know, f finding somebody who's, who's done it and, and just mentor you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Over the past few years, what belief or protocol have you established that's most impacted you or your company? Believe it or not, uh, I, I think that I learned it from my dad, that protocol. And my dad uh, recently passed away uh, in Hawaii. I'm, I'm born and raised in Hawaii. Uh, he was a farmer turned into a financial person in, then into a realtor his ability to connect with people and invest time with people was amazing he would continuously give in fact um i was just home uh over the holidays and uh people would come up to us and say your dad 
did this for me. He did that. He actually helped sell my house and at no commission. He, your dad uh, helped me clean the yard, you know? And I was like, wow. Uh, yeah, very great man. And at the time, it was, he was one of the four original realtors in our town that the town had. Uh, and it became the, in some ways, he was like the father of our town. Uh, he sold half the people uh, homes in our town of now it's probably two hundred thousand people. But just and so uh, just yeah. Last week my mother needed her screen fix in the back. Someone came over and said, "No, don't. I'm not going to charge you. Your your husband helped me with everything." You know, like wow. Even to the financial person, he said, "I'm I'm doing this all for you guys just because your dad was a good man." Um, in fact, I'm taking my whole studio setup over there. I'm going to do headshots for them as, as a gift to say thank you, not charging them. You know, just, uh, I think he instilled that within me um, and uh, to give back and to help people and because then you have that bond and that relationship and, and that goes far. Advice that you would offer to perhaps a, a new business owner that wants to follow a similar path in in the imagery world what advice would you offer find someone and their style that you love and go after learning from them or and it's not just as a photographer but it's in in business it's in you know in communicating um so i'm a big believer in spending the money in hiring the best and learning from the best um, don't mess around with, uh, yes, you, again, you can find everything on YouTube and some things it's great if you want to fix your car, but I don't want to be a mechanic, you know, but if I want to, uh, learn from the best of where there's editing, editing imagery, you know, it's a style of headshot I want to do. Uh, it's, you know, whatever you want to do, find the person and, and, and learn from the best. Pick the proper mentor. Yes. Most common misconceptions, uh, what people think about when you go to do imagery work for them. Let's talk about that. Biggest misconceptions, uh, in my industry, there's a lot of amateurs, hobbyists, wanting to make this as a profession. Uh, hey, I just got a you know DSLR camera and, and I wanna do weddings now, you know? And it's like, oh my. Um, so here's my point. Uh, I don't compete with, with the hobbyists. A lot of misconceptions, misconception is, oh, your prices are so high. It's like, yes, they are high for a reason. One, I have my master's degree in digital photography, but two, uh, the quality of the work I produce. I, I'm not going to compete with your, you know, college student or your, you know, hobbyist doing a headshot. Go ahead. But I take pride in my work. Um, you know, everything I do, I, I try to take pride in the quality of my work and, and really making it, you know, my customers happy. That's the goal is to help them, you know, communicate. So if they're not happy, I want them to, you know, so my price tag is a lot higher than others, uh, because of the quality. And so that's why I'm going after. Well, and it's from my perspective, it's evident. <laughs> so as a beneficiary of your work, <laughs> thank you. You know, looking back over the past few years, what would or should you have said no to? Or why? Oh, yes. So by nature, personality, I'm a people person. I'm a people pleaser. Let me clarify that. And so, yes, I talked about helping your customers and everything. But sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm so busy uh, doing things for others, I'm not get taking care of myself. Saying no to other things means yes to other things. And so taking care of myself uh, having boundaries uh, of my work, you know, my family. Um, and so, yeah, I feel like that's, uh, I say yes too often. <laughs> so learning to say no really is, is important to, to, you know, all the other things that can grab your time. In the day-to-day -day operation of your company, you know, people have either ritual self-talk that they go through. What's your ritual or self-talk that keeps you focused? Again, it's going back to that, you know, those few minutes, you know, 10, 15 minutes starting your day. Um, you know, uh, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, so really trying to take some time to um, 
reading some scripture, you know, thinking about messages from other people, uh, thoughts, uh, going through that and just calming myself down. And, and I can get so worked up about work and things that need to be done and I forget about myself and taking care of myself. And so really, uh, you know, that and along with having a, a, a puppy, you know, having to walk the puppy every morning, uh, that gives me that time to both walk and think as well. Um, so get a dog. No. <laughs> <laughs> a quote that you find meaningful or one that you use frequently. Yes, it's that uh, that quote, that 7-Eleven quote from uh, Michael Solomon, you know, that uh, you have seven seconds to make an impact on a person. Uh, they'll, by then, you'll, they'll have 11 judgments of you. And so really that, yeah, I feel like that's one of my uh, things is making that first impression. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's key. Yeah, what's that, that that old axe that they say you, know, you only have one? You don't get a second chance to make a first impression. <laughs> there you go. That's yeah. it. To you know, we're, we're heading toward the tail end of this. And, you know, mm-hmm. if I was to talk to colleagues and ask them what you're best at, what would they say, and how do you utilize that strength in your business? I'm fun to work with. Uh, I hear that often, uh, especially people when I'm doing. Those workshops, I have 15 to 20 people come in. I have 10 minutes with you. Um, And so just being able to connect with me, that's that's big. Um, I'm fun. I'm lighthearted. But also the quality of my work. uh, I feel like, you know, as I share it with others, I feel like that's they love they love that and and I get a lot of positive responses from the headshots you know and and the artistic you know the creative my new visual branding thing that that's that's been a lot of fun so you know I, I you know as we come to a close here um, you know I, and it's a personal bias you know I believe that the imagery and and conveying who you're who you are what you're about you know in social media and in your business is extremely important mm-hmm. I think sometimes it gets pushed to the side. Mm-hmm. Or with the advent of cell phones and yes. selfies, and I can shoot a photo right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I think people can tell, hmm. and I think it it says a lot about who you are and what your business is about. If you spend the time, effort, and energy to try to to portray who you are properly through imagery, mm-hmm. and so hence why we're here. That's why we're doing this in the podcast today because I think it's a benefit to the listeners. If they haven't reviewed what they're doing in the imagery, mm-hmm. uh, to take a hard look at it. Hmm. Yes. You know, and if you really want a good critique, show it to somebody that loves you and goes, "That's not really you." Hmm. Yep. <laughs> you know, and and yes. find, find to get that image that portrays who you are. Yes. So, Shelley, thank you so much for thank taking you. time out of your day. Thank you for having me. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I'm been a honored. pleasure. Yep. Thank you. You bet.